All right. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Terraforming Mars Solo Challenge. There's been lots of debate around how to deal with the fact that the game is giving us additional TR per generation. I'm going to... I'm going to put this in now. I'm going to splice in a little pre-recorded bit about me walking through. And then we're going to jump into a terraform. So bear with that. You can skip forward and just see the terraform. But basically, net here, we're going to go for 120 points instead of 100 while this bug is in play. And we're going to go for uh, 73 TR. Or sorry, 74 TR because we get 11 free from the government. Unless we stop the government by terraforming early. And then we get more of those bumps so we don't have to come back. But anyways... All right, hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to Bugged Venus Next, where we get free TR. People have been talking to me about the inflationary value of the money that we get over time and yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to break this out right away. All right, so first of all, here's the table. All right, left table, this is from a board game geek thread that started in 2018. Value of TR, value of money. Basically... They, they decided the inflation or internal rate of return, you know, these are some financial terms here, is about 10% in Terraforming Mars. More on that later, okay? So if you have money early, it's worth more to have it early up front because then you can do things that get you money over the course of the game. $10 at the start of the game can get your whole economy going. $10 at the end of the game is hopefully you have a card that you can spend for 10 bucks and get some points, okay? Great, love it, we're all on board for that. You, with the Venus Next expansion, are getting an extra dollar on Gen 3, 2, uh, 2 on 4, 3 on 5, 4 on 6. You get $55 total over the course of the game. Very backloaded, but notably in the middle, it's a significant chunk of change that would be very helpful. 15 bucks between uh, Generations 3 and 7. Not bad. Um... So what I did is I said, okay, let's put this into an inflation calculator at 10% and say, if you got all of this $55 on Gen 1, it would be equivalent to getting $24. That's like a little bit better than a prelude, right? Like think of donation as like, what, $21 or something like that, right? So it's like a prelude of extra money up front if you were to think about it that way in terms of if you're going to get money over the course of the game. Or if we said, what if you got all this money at the end of the game after it inflated and build up? Well, instead of getting $55, you're really getting like $75 because this $1 that you have is going to get you $2.4 through inflation, investment, what have you, right? $10 at the end of the game is only worth $10, but $9 the generation before could be worth 9.9 .9. Ooh, 10 percent increase we love that so awesome 75 dollars what i did is i said okay let's say you get 10 dollars per victory point at the end of the game maybe you have a couple cards that are good maybe you're buying a two-point city and you're going to get some placement bonus maybe you're buying a two-point greenery you know something like that it's about 10 dollars a victory point at the end of the game yes you should have cards that are better than that but like it just if you have extra cash at the end that means that Bet you're going to get seven and a half extra victory points from getting $75 over the course of the game. And you're going to get 11 free TR. Um, incredible. Awesome. Right? So over the course of the game, you're going to get 19 extra points. I was ballparking around 20. Turns out it was 19. But let's just say that this inflation rate is lower. I don't think people are arguing lower. Uh, well, some people do, but whatever. Let's say it was 5%. Well, in that case, getting money early, um, you know, money early is less valuable, so it's closer to the 55. Getting money late is less of a matter, so it's worth like 64. Basically, you're getting 6.4 points instead of 7.5. Still, it rounds up to like 18 points you'd have to take off your deduction at the end, in addition to the 11 TR. But what if inflation was 50% higher than the board game Geek Baseline, right? Let's say it's 50% higher. Well, now at the end of the game, instead of getting um, 7.5 extra points, 
right? We're gonna get, or from $75, we're gonna get 89 extra dollars because that investment pays higher. That three or that $1 we got is really worth three and a half dollars because we got it so early, right? So again though, that's gonna give us about nine extra victory points plus the 11 free TR, it's about 20. So thank you for my TED talk. Here's a table about uh, generations left versus a $10 per VP TR metric income thing that was also cited. I didn't use it in my calcs, but it's there in case you want to look at what some people were showing off as well to try and explain this concept. But at the end of the day, in terms of our goals, okay, instead of needing to get a 100 point game to be considered success, we need to be able to get 120 points so that after we deduce the 20, it's equivalent to what we were playing before, okay? It's actually a little bit harder on ourselves, but again, this, uh, this points per VP, right? Let's say it was, let's say we only have to pay eight points of VP. Well, now we have to get a little bit more out, right? But typically that, that only happens with some cards you invested in early. You know, I don't think anybody's out there saying that you're gonna get three points per VP, which blows up the number. I really do believe that with the last couple games as a pilot, like sometimes you're just like, oh, what can I do with the extra bump? Sometimes it's the big break point. That extra couple bucks gets you enough to buy that extra city, and that city's worth five points. It's an incredible buy, but that's not typical, okay? So anyway, we need to get 120 points, and okay, with pass Matt out of the way, let's get a solo challenge running here. Uh, we're just going to roll with whatever comes up. It's okay if we've played the company again or recently. Aphrodite, fine. Any Venus stuff here? Nah. Venus Way Stations, though, that's always fun. A discount towards leaning into Venus. But nothing um, nothing all that compelling or interesting. What was the other corporation? Ooh, I mean, this is going to be a sad one. At least we can place a city and grab, like, some card draw or something. And then maybe some titanium and hope for some better cards. We can try and push the oxygen. We can get some bonus TR. If we get energy, that would be nice. But basically everything else is pointless to me. So let's just go for three cards and hope that that is meaningful. Aerial mappers. Nice. That means I can play my uh, Venus Way Station for three titanium. And then aerial mappers. I can start putting on itself to get us some card draw. That's nice. And I, we might also get another card that synergizes with, with it in the future in terms of floaters we'll get our nitrate producing bacteria not a very strong card in terms of engine but it helps us get to 63 tr and i mean i had nothing else to do i'm literally holding a ton of cash going to gen 2 here um the government can help us with oxygen for this or venus bumps to give us money i don't need that much money right now so let's just take the the oxygen bump more late game stuff We did end up with like a cupola city. Let's draw a card. Energy card, please. Energy card. No, Dawn City. I mean, good points, but. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think unfortunately we have to do an energy income for like standard project and then just buy some energy so that we can at least get something moving here. Again, world government, we could push Venus um, or oxygen. I don't have that much money, so I'll take the Venus bump because it gives us the two extra bucks. Another card that requires oxygen, I mean, fine. We have a plant income from being Aphrodite. Let's transition that into money income just because we are pretty broke here at the start of the game. Um, yeah, and then with that four extra money less terraform but hey at least we have some heat coming in uh, we can ask the government to just push the oxygen thank you government research outpost is lovely two floaters per venus bump is really tricky with forced precipitation we can make it work but ugh, it's it's not super hot we might find other synergies so i'm gonna pick it up but know that i'm not thrilled about it I do have a card draw lined up, so let's try that out. 
Gyropolis, money income for Venus and Earth. Unfortunately, like, we, we do have some Venus, but, like, no Earth. So, hmm. The research outpost is nice, though. A dollar off of everything uh, can always add up. It gives us a city, which is adjacent to nothing. So we'll just take the money zone, perhaps. You know, all of a sudden, that one plant income may have been useful, but... It's fine. A little bit of money coming in helps. Push the oxygen again. Venus stuff. Plant tag. I mean, a cheap ocean at the end of the game might be worthwhile. Like, fine. We have enough microbes for another bump of TR, which is nice. But, like, we're just... Like, um, I'm at the point here where I'm like, do I do a large convoy? And then we put a granary down for some money. Like, what? Uh, what? What is happening in this game? 15. Like, just, I have nothing to do. So, just for the sake of pushing this game along and getting us out of, like, a production rut, this isn't so bad. Um, uh, so, micro, per, I mean... Microbes for heat bumps would be nice, even though that's really not what I had intended to do this round. I'm so broke that local shading for a dollar, I might forgo card draw just to get local shading and extra income in Gen 5. I forgot to do a Gen 4 audit, but hey, even after Gen 5, we have very little production, right? We're at only 23 TR. The government has done a ton of work for us. Thankfully, we did some terraforming this round, but, like, ugh. We have some cities on the board, which might help for points, but, look, in terms of financials, we are we got some discounts. So, hopefully, hopefully we can hit something to make that work, uh, but it's not, it's really not that hot. In terms of terraforming, we do have the minimum that I usually say, five heat income, but no real plants. We have a couple of clickables here to help us with the heat now. We have... Maybe something coming here to help us with Venus. Like, I don't know. I think I think that we're below average. Ex ex exceedingly considering the fact that we need 120 points to consider this a win. Plus, we have to terraform everything. Plus, we want to get, you know, just all of the things. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and pass. I'm actually going to get a heat bump next. Because I think a heat bump would help us. Because we have a heat bump lined up. To getting this free heat production a uh, really cheap venus bump is nice so is greenhouses but i certainly don't want another city card and then here's the thing what are we doing we could throw out a card for card draw certainly oh shuttles was about to be playable but i don't have any energy well, here's the thing. What am I trying to do this gen? Probably just force precipitation and putting some floaters on it. So if that's the case, I should play sponsored academies and go looking for something better. I don't think we're going to go for Cupola City. Again, we already have cities on the board. Design microorganisms, adapted lichen, and Saleta. We could pivot into some plant income, but... Hmm... But, mmm. Let's get our microbes. I think, I think I'm going to get the force precipitation engine started. We're going to put floaters on force precipitation to try and fuel it. We're going to end up spending money to fuel it as well. But, hey. One step at a time. One step forward, two steps back. So, let's get our adapted lichen now. That extra plant income is okay. Now that we have some board presence, hopefully more oceans to come. We're going to get another Venus bump. Or no, I'm going to get another temperature bump so that we get this next thing here. Uh, energy production and green replacements on the cheap are lovely. So heat income. Peroxide power certainly opens up some some stuff for us let's just keep pushing on force precipitation let's get some income and i don't think i have much for card draw this turn 
I think it's fair to say that just getting two more plant income in Gen 7 is what? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's like 10 plants for 15 bucks. It's like the same as doing plantation, but I don't have to spend it so late. At least I get a energy tag or a science tag out of it. I don't know. It's that or heat income. $34 for heat income. The fact that I can actually afford Saletta is a little bit wild. And if that is a if that's an actual terraforming rating almost every generation. I think we got to do it. That kind of solves the heat conundrum that we were in. In terms of government help, let's take Let's take a Venus, try and stay as high as possible. That's going to help us get this extra card draw. Two cards here that have double bumps on them that could be played on Venus. Very nice. Very nice. What's set up right now? What do we want to do? I really want to get the oxygen up so that I can get shuttles so that I can get spin inducing asteroid like that's like the chain that I want to do so why don't I well I don't actually have enough money for all that Well, maybe we do. I'm going to take the plantation. I'm going to put it here for the two plants. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it beside our city for going this ocean adjacency. That's fine. Then that got us some money back. We'll do peroxide power. Then we do shuttles. We can use our titanium here. Then we come over here. Spin inducing asteroid that gets us a card. Dirigibles. I mean, dirigibles are pretty nice. They will help us fuel like force precipitation or something even faster. Then you guys are going to get all set to fire off next turn. Thing is, I could play dirigibles this turn and still get my other benefits because I did get money back from doing a Venus bump so like if I play dirigibles I can take it and I can put the the floater on dirigibles which allows me to spend the dirigible for the neutralizer factory that also gets me the two dollars back though I don't have anything to do with it but I don't know all of a sudden I feel like we've really started crunching some terraforming in a way that is meaningful we have seven venus tags maybe i should have really reconsidered on uh gyropolis at this point it's like two points and something else um i'm gonna get another oxygen i think we'll need oxygen before this is done getting some energy would be nice getting algae and farming and all that would be nice too but like it's not i can't even play any of these cards like what am i gonna do standard project for it well, i don't know we do have all those microbes ready to fire off but let's keep going on force precipitation it really hurts to have to use this many actions just to fire it off. But hey, gets us that TR bump this turn. This gets us an income this turn. Why are you... I could have sworn two generations ago that this was, or a generation ago that I was ready. Then I put a click on it. Then I played it this generation, put a click on it. I. I'm watching you. 
GHG producing bacteria. I've said it out loud now. You must... You must comply. Atmos scoop? I mean, it's nice. It'll get me two more floaters. I think I do that next gen. I think this gen, I'm going to do a power plant and gyropolis. Just for the two points or to get over here? I'm going to do for two points. I should have got an ocean first, but hey, say la vie. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that gets me enough to play greenhouses. And again, I'm just going to put in between. We really, I think it's time to standard project some oceans, basically going into next gen. But we'll see what happens. The heat is certainly coming up. Uh, though we only have so many more generations to go. But there's an ocean. I'm going to put it here so that I can get them easier. I don't have energy, but this this will create energy for me, basically. I don't know that I need black polar dust, though. Hmm. I don't even know that I need a wild tag, but... But we're here now. Okay. So, at most scoop for two... I mean, do I need... Where are we? One two next turn i'm gonna have like two more two more i just feel like there's so many more cards that bump heat whereas venus bumps maybe we're getting one two like atmos scoop needs to be played for venus bumps is what i was getting at there we take our force precipitation and we fire it off again and then just because i have it venus magnetizer we need energy we're going to get a space mirror. That's going to allow us to play fusion power. I don't have to yet. But there you go. More of this. And then you have to play on yourself. Dirigibles onto aerial mappers. Let's get another card draw. I mean, we have discounts. Like, we could hit something not crappy. Hmm. Okay. So this is ready to fire off. Now, I mean, it's time to buy standard project aquifer. And probably, I mean, you could also buy the energy. You could also get Dawn City. I think we just, just aquifer, man. Just buy them. We need so many more even get after getting the free one we're gonna need more so what do we actually need help with like do we need help with venus do we need help with oxygen i think it's oxygen i would say oxygen let's let's get some help with oxygen bushes imported hydrogen those are both helpful symbiotic fungus I don't know. Symbiotic fungus can help one of our two microbes. I'm not sure which one yet. Like, which one we'll pick. Um, so, local shading for some income. Dirigibles onto forced precipitation because that is how we roll. So, not it's really not a good card, but we've gotten some value out of how cheap it is. That plus the energy we can consume means that next turn we're basically free... We can do anything else with that click instead. Heat bump, heat bump gives us the free ocean. That lets us put a greenery down for some moolah. Then we take imported hydrogen. And I actually think we do take it for the microbes. We have two heat bumps coming. Maybe maybe more, maybe not more. I'm going to take it for the microbes. And that's going to allow me to bump this up. You're, I mean, the problem is that I'm going to be a microbe short regardless, right? Or no, I'm going to be okay. Because that means I can get GHG producing to a state where I can get me that third heat bump. And then next gen I can put nitrate reducing to the state where I can get another bump as well. Let's get this card. 
Ecological zone. It's not too late for that. Let's go ahead and place this here for two titanium. Can help us with the Dawn City. Uh, we'll certainly play bushes. And here's the weird thing where, like, I have enough money now that I don't think I want ironworks. Like, I could keep my energy at four. I could play it right now. I still need oceans, but with the amount of TR that we have, I'd rather just play greeneries, I think. You play a greenery here. You play a greenery here. Uh, I could put one up here for the two steel, but maybe not there, you know? Maybe not there. Well, you know what? Let's take it. It's fine. So, like, that gets us everything we need there. I can just do a free oxygen month from the government if that's what I really need. Which, I mean, I guess, is it? Yeah, it is. So, I don't know. Let's see what the points, how the points roll. We need to get more TR. I'm going to take the oxygen just so I don't uh, have to worry about that. Extremophiles. I don't think I need another microbe. This hits. This hits. We're good. We can't play you. We can't play you. We don't need you. Yep, no no card worth playing. Dirigibles onto aerial mappers, and let's get another card draw. Two more Venus bumps. Lovely. Well, Venus bump for energy feels okay. Heat bump, heat bump. These microbes are setting up the rest of the heat track. This goes onto nitrate so that we can get this bonus TR. And we hit 74, baby. 63 is 74 because of the plus 11 needed from the world government. Oh, we're, we're close. We're closing in on it. Um, none, of, none of this matters. Let's do the two oceans as we must. Four bucks and six bucks is better than four bucks. Uh, like six, six bucks is just the best. So that's good. And now, it's like, again, this is what I was talking about, is when you get to the end of the game, a lot of the time when you're buying a city, it's a two-point city. Like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. That's 25 bucks, plus I'm going to get two bucks back in a plant. Like, fine. We'll spend another 25 bucks. We'll get two bucks back. Great. We now get a bonus greenery in the next phase uh, for two points. So those ended up. this ended up being a three-point city. This ended up being a two-point city. Um... We just picked up the titanium from the board so I can play Dawn City. And then let's finally just sell. I didn't end up needing research coordination, but better safe than sorry. I could buy a city or a greenery. I would rather buy a greenery for two points than a city for two points because I have no... I have no VP incentive either way. Ecological zone. How close did... You ended up being close to something, but... I forgot I had bought you. Well, I don't know. I mean, cities are kind of cool, right? A two-point city or a two-point greenery. Like, whatever, man. We'll build the city. So, awesome. And then there's a bonus. I... I feel like it needs to go here though even though i built a new city i don't want to grab those two point spots so let's see 120 see we didn't get it we didn't get it we got the equivalent of 95 points but we terraformed the whole planet we got 74 or more tr and we got the achievement for terraforming in solo for the first time terraforming all of venus on our own um so yeah, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> this new mindset of like, we got a two out of three ain't bad, man. Two out of three ain't bad. Uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.